Well, good evening, everybody. It's Zero, and we are back with some more History Buff Reacts. And today, we are taking a look at True Stories About Chimps by Salmonella. Because, of course, we've got to have some Salmonella in our life. That's not certain someone thought I'd said. Whatever. <laughs> I... I I don't, I don't know what this is going to be about, but um, there's a few stories in history about um, chimps um, and some of their escapades. So I'm wondering which ones it's going to be. I wonder if the chimp going into space is going to be one of them, or maybe it's going to be something along the lines of... Uh, Salmonella, so I don't actually know. But we're about to find out, aren't we? <laughs> so get yourselves comfy. Let's go. Hey kids, Hi, so Sam. we all know that, as far as living things go, humans win, not even a contest. But it turns out, if you hop to the next genome over and look real carefully, you can actually see a basic version of a lot of the stuff that makes us so great. Here's some stories about what okay. chimpanzees can get down to in the right context. Talking about chimp tales. <laughs> Now, North Korea's Pyongyang <laughs> Central right. Zoo has a colorful history, from its humble beginnings as literally just 50 bad- I straight up missed that, hang on. <laughs> Pyong Pyongyang Central Zoo. So that's the one in North Korea, isn't it? Pyongyang, Pyongyang Central Zoo has a colorful history, from its humble beginnings as literally just 50 badgers in a fence, to the parrot <laughs> they taught to recite poetry praising Kim Il-sung, to being the only place in Pyongyang where okay. you can look at a dog legally. It seems the only thing that's remained constant throughout- Look at a dog legally. What? <laughs> what? what? <laughs> I don't understand. Look at a dog legally? What does that mean? <laughs> Is it illegal to look at dogs? I'm so confused. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> I don't get that one. Okay. Um, here comes the song. Dude. Here comes the song. No. No. About this zoo's life is that it's fucking depressing. Fortunately, both workers and animals alike found ways to cope, one of which is smoking. Azalea the chimp is currently 13 years old and is one of the shining stars of Pyongyang Zoo purely for her ability to burn through over a pack a day. Now I like a good Jesus old fashioned Christ, smoking right, chimp okay. as much as the next guy, but whereas most zookeepers would probably try to talk her out of something so unhealthy, the North Korean ones actually gave her supplies just like, <laughs> feeling trapped, welcome to the club pal. Her skills are actually pretty <laughs> impressive. Not only can she use a later, but in a pinch, she also knows that old schoolyard trick of lighting one ciggy with the other. Just a shame that her mind wasn't put towards something a little more healthy or productive. Nah, you know what? That's pretty dope, actually. I'm happy with that. <laughs> Flashback to 1954. Oh, God. What was it called? What do we call it here? Is it... Ben and Cherry, I think it is. That's what we call it. Ben and Cherry. So, bum a cherry or somebody and you light their fag with your fag. I think that's what it's called. Anyway. I don't know. <laughs> I can't remember. I can't remember what it's called. So, North Koreans have a smoking monkey who can burn through a pack a day. If you if you think I look tired, I'm I haven't long woken up and the coffee hasn't kicked in yet. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay, so 1954. Okay. A chimp named Congo was born in the London Zoo. Little did anybody know, this ape was a prodigy. Out of curiosity, one of his zookeepers named Desmond Morris decided to give Congo a pencil and a piece of cardboard to see what he'd do. Almost immediately, he started drawing some rudimentary lines and shapes. <laughs> Morris was like, whoa, and decided to let him try painting on for size. And what okay. he saw was incredible. Congo created these beautiful renderings with a blend of realism and self-expression that would make even the great masters stare in awe. Nah, just fucking with you, they're garbage. But for a non-human, there's still something to be appreciated here. Congo had at least a very basic sense of composition. Like, you can see there's some balance to the images. Matter of fact, when his handler would make shapes on one side of the page, Congo would deliberately mark up the other side to maintain some kind of symmetry. He also had an artist's sense of self-entitlement, huh. because whenever his owner okay. tried to take away a picture before Congo thought it was finished, he'd literally go apeshit, all throwing a fit and screaming till they gave it back. But hey, painting done by a chimp? You know who likes pointless novelties like that? The incredibly rich. In 2005, yes. <laughs> of three of Congo's paintings were up for auction next to works by two obscure little artists known as Andy Warhol and Pierre-Auguste Renoir. And while the two actual artist pieces went completely unsold, these three beauties got picked up for the scant price of over 25,000 US dollars. And wow. I was like, wow, I felt something for a second there. I really like the watermark on this, by the way. Like, hmm, this is my painting done by a chimp. Anyway, <laughs> next we have this beast called Wash... <laughs> 
Oh, yeah, it's, it's a meme with stock images where it's just like, I'm pretty sure that's not your image. That's not yours, but you've stolen it anyway. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, it's so a chimp that can paint. I don't remember him. I don't remember that one, to be honest. But paintings are going for over $25,000. I wish my paintings were over $25,000. I can't paint either. Washo. Washo was the first non-human creature to learn to communicate through sign language. That's right, eat shit, Coco. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> Prior experiments in chimp communication had attempted to teach him some basic spoken language, but after realizing that chimps are physically incapable of making most of the noises we do, yep. he decided signing would be the better option. Washo was raised in an environment similar to what a human child would experience, complete with toys, clothes, chores, and even being allowed to sit at the dinner table, in spite of what the Bible clearly says about that. The scientists raising Washo made sure to only communicate in American Sign Language around her, in the hopes of establishing a true conversational rapport. Initially, they took a traditional Pavlovian approach by rewarding proper use of a new sign with food and tickles. But there were a couple problems with this. Firstly, the simple- Why? Why were you so loud? <laughs> Why, why did you have to do that? Action reward setup meant that Washo didn't have to really understand the words she was signing. Same way a parrot saying I love you in a YouTube video always does it with those cold, unfeeling eyes. Secondly, Washo would break into a laughing fit whenever they tickled her, to the point where the lesson would be essentially over. So the researchers <laughs> abandoned this and instead just let her okay. learn through observation of her caretaker signing, with much better results even in the total absence of reward stimuli. And the only downside was that okay. the job title of designated chimp tickler ceased to exist. In total, <laughs> Washo learned no. about 350 individual signs in ASL, and she'd even use these to formulate novel phrases for new objects. Like one time she wanted to talk about a thermos, but didn't know what a thermos was. She goes, hmm, metal cup a drink. <laughs> hey, skip! A similar story comes from a chimp named Lucy, okay. who was raised by one Dr. Maurice Temerlin and his wife, Jane. The tale of Lucy's life is why this woman is now officially the third most famous woman named Jane who worked with apes. In the same vein as Washo, the pair attempted to gain some insight into Lucy's weird chimp noggin by raising her like you would a human. You know, dressing herself, using silverware, making tea, looking at magazines, pretending she knows what a word is, all that jazz. But as Lucy matured, things took okay. an ugly turn. For once, since she was brought up in a basically human environment, she eventually discovered the time-tested human pastime of alcohol. The pair would leave bottles oh, of gin around their <laughs> home with Lucy, which, I don't know how you'd make this mistake twice, but it was apparently a common occurrence for them to leave her alone for too long and come back like, uh, honey? I think the monkey's fucking wasted. Again. <laughs> Another one of her hobbies was sculpting crude human heads okay. out of poop. Her own poop, to be clear. They also left some copies of Playgirl magazine around for Lucy to flip through, which she became very fond of. So fond, in fact, that she was caught multiple times, uh, having relations with the vacuum cleaner. I don't understand the mechanics of it, because no source I found ever went into detail, and believe me, I wanted to know as much as you do. All I know is that, all things considered, some pretty exemplary tool use there. So the pair saw this and they were like, all right, we gotta get this chimp laid and fast. But the problem was, Lucy was conversing with people, eating with people, flicking the old chimp bean to people. So it's not a stretch to think that Lucy thought she was people. So imagine you're people and you get thrown into an enclosure with a full grown horny male chimp. You'd have a fucking panic attack. And that's just what Lucy did. As the years went on, Lucy got more and more violent, regularly trashing the place to get out of the frustration of not being able to comprehend what was so fundamentally unnatural about her existence. Finally, the couple had had enough and decided to take Lucy to a primate rehabilitation center in the Gambia, with the hopes that she could be forced to acclimate to primate life. She could okay. barely cope with it at first, getting real depressed and hardly associating with the other apes. Which you'd be depressed too if you had to give up a life of American luxury complete with booze and vacuum fornicating to go live with chimps in the wild. But with the help <laughs> of a graduate student named Janice, True. Lucy eventually came to accept her fate, and although she'd never mate with another of her kind, she ended up getting along with her troop well enough. About a year after leaving the rehab center, Janice came back to visit, and Lucy gave her a warm embrace before waddling back to the rest of the chimps. Aww. Then Lucy got poached like a fucking egg, which kind of puts a damper on the whole happy ending. What the fuck? Another year later, Carter turned to find Lucy's corpse. She'd been decapitated and her hands had been hacked off. What? Sorry, what? That escalated. That escalated quickly. Okay. Why? <laughs> Please explain. I'll go back. Aww. Then Lucy got poached like a fucking egg, which kind of puts a damper on the whole happy ending, but, you know, 
Whatever. So if there's one lesson to be so gained no from all this, about is that, that the okay. best way to learn something is to be immersed in it and to make it part of you. While treats are good for making dogs do backflips, true comprehension comes from integrating new things into your daily life. And what better way to do that than with some free audiobooks? Sponsor time. Oh, Listening to audiobooks audible? inspires us. Motiv okay. So... Okay, there's a quite a bit to digest there. <laughs> so, hang on. Okay, I only knew about one of those, which was the painting chimp. That's the only one that I actually remember. So, the others I generally didn't know about. Obviously, the sign language with the chimps is known. But holy shit. <laughs> You can, you, can, you can train the chimp for a while, but instinct kicks in. Oh, sorry. Instinct takes over every time, eventually. Oh, God. I'm going to have to scrub my brain clean after this. And that's the end of the video. Thank you very much for watching, guys. If you did enjoy it, please make sure to press those like and subscribe buttons. And also hit that bell so you know when I upload and... Keep an eye on the community posts from the channel as well. But if you want to watch a little bit more, check out over here. At the top, you'll see the most recent video apart from this one. And down below that, you'll see the whole History Buff Reacts playlist. And also check in the links in the video description for my Discord and my Twitch links, if you so desire. But I've been Zero. This has been True Stories About Chimps by Salmonella. And I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.